Um, you kind of already touched on this, but um, some of those challenges that you went through, um, what was the emotion internally? Um, so, so we're all real with each other right here. I still struggle. It's, um, it's the, it's not being good enough. It's shame. It's low self-esteem. Um, you know, I've read a lot of books and, and watched videos and, and whatever. And so I'm familiar with the fact that when you don't get your needs fulfilled, right? When you're young, it's damaging. And um, so you will spend a, a large part of your life searching out for that and maybe not always finding it in the right place. And so um, I think for me, because my mom was abused, she was very physically abusive. To, and I have a brother and sister and she was abusive to them as well. Um, you want to be loved because the person as a child, when you're or a baby, when you're born, right? Like your parents are the one, they're your savior. Mm -hmm. And when the savior isn't giving you the love and protecting you and giving those things that you need, um, it creates some sort of, I'm not good enough. Something must be wrong with me. Cause my own parent doesn't care enough about me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so I, I'm going to be honest. I think there's a piece of that that's still in me. I'm aware of it, so it's easier to deal with. Like I know what it is now, um, but there's a there's a definitely a, a feeling of my biggest emotion is sorrow. That's what I'll tell you: sorrow, sorrow for what could have been, should have been, what didn't happen for that little girl, um, and sorrow that even now when like so the audience maybe but definitely my friends have said jody you you went to school and had three jobs raised four kids by yourself and you have a master's degree you're amazing and but i don't see that that's not what i see i i still see someone who isn't good enough i didn't get i wasn't unconditionally loved mm -hmm. and i i think i needed that and so um and I'm, I'm okay. Like, you know, I see, a, have seen a counselor and, and um, I'm just going to throw this in here real quick. I, I actually didn't know who my dad was my whole life. And a few years ago um, through um, ancestry met sort of a cousin. Um, she's like a sister to me now, but for a few, you know, like a year or two, we were just kind of writing back and forth. And then one day she decided my sister and I are going to take you under our wings and we're going to do it. And they found my father. Um, yeah. So then I knew my ethnicity and um, and her and her sisters are my, they're my family to me now and they're, they're amazing. And so those things that are happening um, lift you up in life mm -hmm. because I didn't get that from my mom. But I, I remember with this, um, I'm just going to say her name is Rose. Um, she I remember sitting at her sister's house when I went to meet my family in the bedroom. We were sitting in the bedroom and um, I thought my, the family that I was about to meet just maybe wasn't as, as anxious to meet me or something. There was some lack of follow through and it, and every time it devastated me. And I remember just sitting there and breaking down in this horrible cry and saying, I just want one person to love me that won't leave just one person like we do our children because it doesn't matter what they say to us or what's going on. We don't leave. Right. And I didn't have that. And I think that's the core of the, that was the biggest probably struggle I've ever had. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I'm good. And I think that it's important that you, you know, I, I had to realize that it, it, it was there. It just maybe wasn't the husband or the mom that was giving me that. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and I, and Rose ended up being, I know my children love me unconditionally, but for Rose and her sisters, 
they're not required to. Yeah. Right. And so that's the person you can tell anything to and they still love you and they're, and they're always there. And after a life of never having that, it was very hard to trust. And I, I don't know how many other people in the audience feel this way, but just like you want it so bad that you allow yourself to a certain point to start trusting it. And then you cut it off because you just, you can't go any further. You're sure that, nope, they're going to hurt me too. Because there are a lot of not so nice people in the world that t take advantage. Maybe some people don't even know that they're doing it, but um, don't give you the, the respect that you, you deserve and take advantage. And so it's a pattern. Yeah. And also because I felt that way, I was around those people. Those were the relationships I had. And when mm -hmm. I was done with college and I changed a lot of different things, like my mindset, just, I just learned so much. And then the people I was with were much healthier, right? They were easy to be around because they were, they had goals and dreams and I was doing the same thing. And so um, they also weren't women that were putting up with men cheating and, and not having jobs and alcoholism because when I, when I was going through that, many of the people I was with had similar relationships. So I actually was questioning, like, is it just me? Like, did our moms just not tell us this? And mm -hmm. we just zip it when they cheat. And yeah. Yeah. Um, as of now, you know, where you're at now, what kind of success, what kind of joy do you see in your life right now? So definitely my children are my biggest joy. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'm a special needs teacher. So I've worked with a variety of, of students. Some of them just have had a kind of a tough home life, similar to mine and oftentimes much worse. Um, and then some of them just, you know, autism or medical um, things going on. And that's my joy. Like it, it just brings me joy to see them. I still do some respite care um, because I choose to. I, don't, I guess it's not really rest, but I'm not getting paid anymore. I just visit. I visit my kids and um, and see them. And then now finding out that I'm Hispanic, um, there's a small joy in in learning my my new culture. And it 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 wants to be a big joy, but I'm like nervous because I don't speak Spanish and I don't know how to cook all the food. And I feel like I'm a poser, right? I feel like <laughs> you're not really Mexican. Stop trying to be Mexican. But um, it's just amazing to me that, you know, 10 or 12 years ago when I was going through all that garbage, I had no idea this would be my life, that I would actually know who my father was and I would be learning all these great things and I would meet these new people. So, you, you know, you just never know. But I would say um, my passion is is kids, like especially teenagers. Just you got to love them. <laughs> They're still honest. They're still yeah. being very, very honest to your face. <laughs> Oh, I love that. What else? Um, what other joys? Hmm. I really, for me, it's just, it's my friends and my family um, and my students. I think that's, that's the biggest joy for me. I, I've managed to um, find a really close knit group of friends and and I love learning. So I'm not sure. So right now I'm a special ed teacher and I'm not sure that's where I'll land. Like if that'll be it, I think that I maybe want to do something else after this. And so that's exciting to think about too. And like, what would what you do? You, know, I, you know, I'm not sure. I, I'll tell you what, if someone out oh, the, the question is, if you won the lottery and you could do anything, what would you do? Okay. If I could, if I won the lottery and could do anything, I actually would open like a, I don't know. I, I hate the word shelter, but like for teens who, you know, parents have kicked them out or done whatever, um, I would run something like that so that they can come, they can get food, they have a place to sleep. And tomorrow they can go to school knowing that they still have a place to sleep and some food in their belly. And I'm not blaming parents. This, again, not a blame game. Mm -hmm. Things that happen in life that, you know, it, it's irrelevant. The fact is that I've, I have a lot of kids. I've met a lot of kids that they're struggling and they're, 
struggling with their parents. And, and I'm sure their parents are struggling too, because that's their baby. And somehow they're losing that connection and they're scared. Right. But if I could be that home that they could sleep in at night and then get up and go to school, because getting that diploma, getting your education and seeing what you can do to change your stars, it's so important. That is my, it's the biggest thing to me is if I could get kids to understand that just because you're born into this situation, it doesn't mean that you have to stay there. And it's hard because when you watch TV, you see rags to riches stories all the time, right? <laughs> but you look at them and you're like, well, they have this and they have that, right? And they, um, you don't have to be an actor. You don't have to be a model. You don't have to have some huge thing, right? That makes you a movie star. Mm -hmm. You're already born with something. So, and I've shared this, this is going to get long winded now because sorry. That's good. I, um, this is how, what I truly believe. I believe that every, every single person, when you think about the science of all the cells combining to make a human being, it's a miracle. Mm -hmm. It's a miracle. Not all cells become human beings, but you did. And I did. That's not an accident. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm not going to say it's God or anything. I'm saying it's intentional. It's intentional that you ended up to be you and I was me and we're purposeful. So everything that Jody does is unique to Jody. And everything that you do is unique to you and, and my children. You know what I mean? And so like you already have what you need to be amazing. You should figure it out, whatever it is that you're good at. And that's all you have to do is be good at the thing that you love and you're already good at because that's the piece of the puzzle that fits to help everybody else. Yeah. So I truly do love kids, have a passion for them and love helping them. And, and because I've cried so much in my life and had heartache and felt desperate and yeah, suicidal at times, yeah. you know, I've been there. I don't want to see other people go through it. And guess what the good news is? This is what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. I just have to do what I already do. So when I have students come and they're like, I don't fit in, or they, they're feeling like they want to take their life. Um, you know, they just don't fit in the world. And I, and I, I try to get this concept across that you are an amazing person just because you're you, there will never be anyone else like you ever, ever, ever again. Mm -hmm. So you're purposeful, you're intentional, you're supposed to be here. You don't have to do anything more than find out what makes you happy and what you're good at. And that's exactly who you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to be. And you will, like when we look at the world as a puzzle, that's your piece, you fit right there. If you're, you're supposed to, because you're gonna give all the other people around you those things. And if you're not here, we're in trouble because nobody likes to look at a puzzle put together with a piece missing, right? It yeah. drives us crazy. We're like, oh my gosh, where's that piece? Could I, we just throw it away because we can't handle it. It's gotta, you gotta have the piece, but we need it. It has to be there. You have to be there. You're yeah. supposed to be here. I need you to be here and you can do it. Like, I, hell, if I, sorry, if I could do it, I feel like they definitely can do it. But I, I think a lot of people just don't believe in themselves yet enough um, and I, honestly, I don't every day, I don't believe in myself in a lot every single day. Um, but I get back to those things that, that help me to feel that way when I'm working with other people and spending time and meeting authentic personalities. And, and honestly, just being here today, like probably four or five months ago, my oldest daughter had said, you know, mom, cause they're all growing up and leaving the house. You, you need a hobby. <laughs> and they have all these groups on Facebook and you can, anything you're interested in, you could join. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up on the single soaring moms, just, just randomly. And I don't always interact. You know, I read what people write and sometimes, and I meet you. <laughs> Intentional, right? It's supposed yeah. to be. And I would have, yeah, it's just crazy to me. That's, that's how life works. And, um, and I also know that, there's those deep, dark moments where this, what, how I'm feeling right now seems like other people feel that I'm mm -hmm. not going to be there. And you can, you mm -hmm. can, 
you can email me and I will talk to you because you can, you can be there. Yeah. Um, but it'll take a little bit of work for sure. Yeah. A hundred percent. I love that analogy you used of the puzzle with the puzzle piece. That's it's so really, true. It It's really, it really is true. I mean, I, love that. I, I stand by it. Like we can, every Every human being in this world is supposed to be here. It is purposeful. You are intentional and you are necessary. You're necessary. I will never, I will never meet. It's hard to explain. The relationships that I have now are unique. Yeah. They won't happen again. There won't be this combination of you and I sitting here ever again. Mm -hmm. Ever. It's once in a lifetime. That's it. Yeah. yeah. So so everything is. It's like, it, it's very important. And that's how I feel about my, when I work with my special needs kids too. I'm like, a lot of them are nonverbal. And you think of all the people in the world that get to be a part of their life. Mm -hmm. I got to be one of those people. I got to be someone. I got to be someone that met you today and talked to people. I got to do that. Yeah. So it matters. It's all 100%, important. 100%.